A robot welding gun is designed and programmed to make the same weld over and over again. Things can get repetitive, but that's the whole idea. Production starts with the gun's electrode caps, made from copper rod. The rod uncoils and travels between wheels that deliver it to a forming machine with a series of punches and dies. Mechanized fingers shunt the rod from one die to the next. The punches drive the rod into the die cavities to stretch and form it into electrode caps. Next up are the electrodes. They come in thousands of different shapes. To make one kind of electrode, automated tools taper a very thick copper rod at one end. A drill bores into the other end to form a hole for cooling water. For other electrode styles, tools carve the solid end of an only partially hollowed blank. They pare it down so that it will be able to perform welds in a small area. They also shape it so that the electrode cap will fit on it. More tools then drill an entrance for cooling water, one that intersects with the hollowed part of the cylinder. More machining and a proprietary bending process take the electrode to its final shape. Next, using a hydraulic machine, a worker bends a copper bar around a die to transform it into a shunt adapter. He measures it to confirm that the dimensions are accurate. An extremely high pressure water jet carves through a thick copper plate to create the welding arms. The water jet's advantage is that it cuts precisely without scorching the copper. At the next station, computerized tools take a solid block of steel to another shape, creating a mount for the motor that produces the welding force. It's quite a transformation. An employee bolts steel plates to the end of the copper arm. He places a washer on the bolts and torques the bolts to a specific setting. He inserts the electrode in the other end of the arm, places the cap on it, and hammers it in place. Then with a crane doing the heavy lifting, he transfers the second weld arm to the first one. He aligns the holes and joins the arms with a temporary metal pin. He then guides the robot welding arms to the transformer that will deliver electricity to the electrodes. After the temporary pin has been replaced with a permanent one, he bolts the arms to a transformer. The welding gun is now ready for the motor. He joins the motor to the arms and torques the bolts until they're tight. The mechanics of this robot welding gun are now complete, but it won't be able to operate effectively without extensive plumbing. An employee cuts plastic tubing to length and connects it to the welding gun. This tubing will supply a constant flow of water to the gun. Without it, the gun would overheat and the electrode tips could melt onto the workpiece. He bundles some of the hoses and ties them together to neaten the installation. They test every robot welding gun to confirm that it's fully operational. This particular gun is a slightly different version than the one we've just seen assembled. The technician also confirms the force at the tips is sufficient for a good weld. Too much force and the tips could be damaged. Too little and the weld will be poor. It takes about an hour to assemble a robot welding gun. It's now ready to leave this factory and be part of the action at another one. <laughs>